Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. Today, a really great episode for you uh, from the brand Synchron. Uh, originally, a union of watch brands formed to share resources. Modern Synchron was actually formed in the 1990s to enable some heritage revival brands uh, pretty much to market uh, in a new online direct-to-consumer business model post-quartz crisis. Think Isofrain, Tropic Strap, or Aqua Dive. Now, this is, of course, a dive watch, some key comic characteristics, and design. When you're looking for a diver, you're going to want water resistance, typically with some type of screw-down crown. You're going to want something that's tough, legible, with a dive time bezel, and a diver's extension is always nice if on bracelets. This is the Poseidon Ice Diver. And uh, it's a limited edition, it's limited to 1,000 pieces. It's currently sold out, uh, but you can actually buy this unit uh, from Belmont Watches for 1600 bucks. A little bit about this model, it pays tribute once again to an exceedingly rare tool uh, watch issued to combat divers during the 1970s. Synchron is back with another military limited edition dive watch that really combines modern watchmaking technologies with the design language of the 1970s. This time presented in collaboration with Swedish dive gear manufacturer Poseidon Diving Systems. So this is a really fun piece, definitely within that enthusiast vein. I don't think you're going to see anybody accidentally wearing this watch. Um, and it's pretty sweet, obviously. There is a pass between the Synchron Group and um, and Doxa. Uh, now they are two separate entities, but you're going to see a lot of similarities, of course, between this piece and um, and you know some um, modern Doxa sub 300 uh, reissues. So they're not, uh, of course that similar not a one-to-one -one by any means they don't think they come out of the same factory but they definitely do carry over a lot of similar design language so with all that said let's go ahead zoom the camera out get this piece in hand and take a closer look all right guys so this is obviously quite a looker i mean the color combination alone with this kind of pale gray um almost white uh similar to this dial which again i think renders visually white in most situations but it's actually a pale gray um and then of course there's a play in terms of actual white uh playing off of the yellow uh this doesn't look like it's fotina or anything like that this is more a direct color choice to say that you know yellow white and black look really good together and then even with a dash of a pale gray now the diameter on this is 42.2 millimeters whereas the thickness is 14 and a half and the lug to lug is 45 millimeters so it's actually quite compact thanks to that short lug to lug distance but one thing that uh, even though I think from this angle it can look very similar to a doxa when you see it at the side angle that's where you see a lot of the differences uh, a modern doxa would have a much trimmer mid case uh, and more contouring that's happening here you're seeing it's a lot flatter it still has of course it's sticker here on the case back because you can buy this exact model new and unworn from uh you know from the guys at belmont watches and uh this is a really cool one i've seen a couple of these in person uh at local meetups and everything and i really do like this color scheme this layout i think this will go great with a green nato strap uh, it definitely is quite hefty and feels very very robust the let's go over the clicks here 120 click unidirectional rotating very nice action Ooh, yes let's do it again and you can see this is extremely legible guys it's just very clear even though there is a lot of color play you know there's definitely more pop in terms of the shape uh, it's still very high contrast right so it's still very very legible which is a key thing for a dive watch right that's what you're really going to want uh is that legibility of course um and then a certain level of symmetry right because you want it to feel very very balanced and simple um <clears throat> 
So again, very kind of docks a sub 300 like, but it I think it does feel a little bit more industrial within its execution, whereas uh, you know the modern sub 300 definitely feels like it's trying to be a little bit more elevated uh, in terms of it being you know a, a very expensive watch by comparison, even a comparison to this at 1600 bucks. Uh, a new Doxa Sub 300 is, is going to be quite a bit more. Now the Sapphire is flat and it does have an air, inner AR coating. Um, and you can see that uh, it's hard to see that Sapphire because it's uh, it's doing a good job. It's doing its job, right? Also, uh, the insert is Sapphire and fully loomed. So you're going to get a lot of nice play as for this when we get to those loom shots. Um, the crown is signed with the Synchron logo, very cool. And the case back is screw in and you can see that great graphic. I mean, that uh, logo is just killer. I mean, that's just the best part about this watch. Um, very, very cool. And then of course, if you are a, a diver or at least a vintage diver collector, uh, you're gonna really recognize that logo. Now behind this solid case back, there's gonna be an automatic LJP or Le Jupere G100 Siange uh, or top grade movement, which is great. 68 hour power reserve, so extended power reserve, four hertz sweep, uh, 28,800 vibrations per hour in terms of the beat rate. So very nice uh, choice. They don't promise anything in terms of, uh, you know, uh, chronometer specs or anything like that. But because this is the higher grade of that LJP movement, uh, you know, it's, it's going to typically hold better. Uh, this is a loner and for me, so I'm not, you know, wearing it and then letting being able to tell you what the timing is but you know generally these movements do uh, get pretty well received within the watch community now the dial is very simplistic printed dial nothing is applied there you know again kind of in that similar vein to doxa the date is going to be at the three o'clock uh, nicely integrated there <clears throat> You're getting a nice amount of Swiss Superluminova, uh, of course, and there's a bit of a mixture in terms of uh, the compounds, which we'll notice once we get into those uh, uh, the loom shots and low light transition. Uh, we have 30 bar or 300 meters of water resistance, which is great, and it feels fitting for this type of watch, especially one that has this level of heft. And I will say it is it does have heft, but it doesn't feel oversized or overbearing or anything like that. It just feels like a tool watch should definitely not quite as refined and doesn't have as many of the same tricks as uh, you know a sub 300 but it also doesn't cost what a sub 300 costs the lugs are 20 millimeters which is great which means it's gonna be very versatile in terms of swapping out straps I think this probably looks best on I think there's actually a light gray rubber tropic strap uh, that was an option on here that I think this kills in I mean obviously I think it looks great on the ISO frame but ISO frames are you know pretty thick and definitely more more utilitarian, more serious type of strap versus a more casual one. I mean, some people can wear these and be very comfortable. And then me personally, I'll take a, uh, you know, a Tropic strap, uh, you know, nine days out of 10 in terms of just the wearability. So, and this is of course a genuine isoframe strap because uh, Synchron Group owns them, right? So very cool, made in Italy there, nicely signed. I mean, this is all, very nice high quality stuff there's a reason that these cost so much it's because they're they're they are special and they are very very good um things can be very good and focused so it's going to not be quite as versatile as you know some other options out there even within their kind of own group uh when i think about the tropic rubber strap so with that said let's actually uh get this on the wrist and see how it wears okay guys wow check that out on my seven and a half inch wrist wears absolutely beautifully definitely feels quite nice and you know again don't be deceived by those numbers at 42 millimeters uh you know that might sound uh quite large but i will say with that 45 millimeter lug to lug it definitely wears a lot more compact of course if i do get it too close to the camera you're gonna get a lot of lens distortion and it's gonna make the watch head appear much larger so what i'll do is i'll leave my hand nice and low and just tighten up the shot so you guys can still get some detailed looks while uh, not getting, of course, that lens distortion. So you can get a bit of a truer aspect ratio of how this might end up laying on your own wrist.
And you can see again, very thick strap. Um, but I think of course it flows with this case, right? Uh, it definitely doesn't look out of place. Um, it has a great uh, modern aesthetic while still having some retro vibes. It's kind of uh, the the past version of the future, which I think is kind of fun. And uh, this thing looks sweet. And then of course, with the way that the layout is in terms of the dial, uh, by having you know this, the different logos at different spots than usual, um, you know, it's just going to give you a little bit more play in terms of you know maybe taking a wrist shot not at uh, 10 10 maybe you'll take it at another time uh, just so you can have more open space uh, over those emblems so very very cool guys and you can see it sits very flat on the wrist um, you know this I think the case it would have been nice if they would have done a little bit more to kind of do some of pull off some of those tricks um, that Doxa has in terms of making it very very wearable but I think that this is not you know far from unwearable I mean this is just uh, it still wears really nicely but I mean if you're somebody that has a sub 300 you might be a little bit disappointed in terms of the, the feeling of a, just less refinement and a more uh, tool like industrial take some of you might be looking for that. That might be the differentiator, right? You might say, hey, I have this watch on my beads of rice for this, and maybe I want to get this watch to be more tool-like for me to go, you know, treat uh, like the watch that it was meant to be. So there's nothing wrong with that by any means, but there's definitely a difference. Some of you might be thinking, oh, well, just, you know, kind of at face value, they're probably exactly the same, and, you know, I'm just getting a big bargain. Um, you know, it's very romantic to think of it that way, but there's definitely some big differences in terms of the case profile and whatnot. So uh, this is still a great looking piece. So with that said, let's actually get it off the wrist, set up for some loom shots, the light transition and closing thoughts. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights here. As you can see, really nicely done, and that indexing is nicely loomed. I think it would have been nice to actually get each minute marker loomed, but I think the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and of course that loom pip triangle is really all that you need. Um, and honestly, you don't even need that much, typically just a loom pip and you'd be good to go. But I think this is nice. Um, but you know, one thing I always do like to work out of course is a bit of low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight a lot of times you're going to find yourself coming in and out of buildings walking underneath overhangs or maybe just spending some time underneath the shade of a tree or in your favorite automobile so it is nice to see what these colors textures and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting to so maybe even include some harsh lighting which typically could expose any types of uh you know ooh. I just knocked the watch off axis there. Um, any types of production defects. And you can see there that the brushing is very nice and uniform as the light glides over it. And then the dial being very matted, it's going to render as a, you know, again, that pale gray, visually white, uh, you know, kind of from afar until you really look and you realize that there's white contrasting off of that dial. Um, but yeah, this is just a good looking watch. I mean, it's a great looking sports watch. The color combination is fantastic. Very versatile. Again, black goes with everything. White goes with everything. And then you, uh, you know, do you pepper in a little bit of that yellow? And I think it also, you know, as a uh, as an accent works really well. And it's still semi neutral, right? Like that's still gonna a pop of yellow isn't necessarily gonna clash with too much in terms of your wardrobe. If you know you're wearing this as just you know your daily wear, so very very nice. Closing thoughts, guys. On the wrist, it doesn't work quite as nice as its Doxa counterpart, but it definitely still feels like a purpose-built dive watch uh, nonetheless. In terms of model variants, you know, this is a limited edition release. There are other kind of synchron military reissues, um, but you know this one i think stands alone on and kind of how cool it is and versatile it is i like that it's somehow very versatile but also very special it feels a little bit more special than the other release uh, a lot of it has to do of course with the poseidon um, systems uh, collaboration portion uh, but yeah this thing is nice uh, in terms of comparable models this does feel more value rich you know in terms of being an alternative to the higher price doxa diver um 
which is great, uh, especially if you're just in that space and you just don't want to spend that much on such a simple watch. Uh, you can get something like this at a more reasonable price. And uh, I mean, not cheap at 1600 bucks, but definitely not necessarily into some level of grail where you're gonna be babying it uh, by any means. So bottom line for me is, this is a really great looking watch, uh, but due to its kind of limited nature release, it will continue to rise in value as long as there are folks okay with paying a premium, you know, to get their hands on these. So again, Yes, these are sold out if you go directly to Synchron, but there are plenty of sellers out there with, uh, you know, with one of them being Belmont Watches locally in San Diego here, uh, who are a team that I can trust uh, and definitely recommend to you guys. So big shout out to Belmont for lending this piece in temporarily. And uh, with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.